Today we're building a steel pallet to replace the wooden one for our drill press. It's going to be made of two and a half by two and a half by quarter inch thick square tubing. The goal is to make a big, strong, wide, heavy base for our drill press. As you see here, the Brobo cold saw makes short work of the square tubing. I'm making the cuts straight so I don't have to miter them and it's easier to construct that way. I cut two 45s and four 40 inch pieces to make a 45 by 45 square. Prep is key and you really have to take off the mill scale on these tubing pieces as it's coated very thick. Here's a rough layout of the structure. I went with a 45 by 45 because this is the widest size I can make with the material that I had. Here's the pallet all clamped down and squared up. And then proceed to tack up the pallet and then start welding it up. The welds don't look too bad, but my heat affected zone is getting pretty wide. I need to work on a faster travel speed. Here I flip the pallet over so I can work on the back side of it. This is what the gap looks like before it's welded up. It's really satisfying to weld when you get the settings and the setup just right. Here's the progress so far and everything is looking pretty good. Now I'm shifting the pallet towards the edge of the table so I can weld the inside corners. Here's a quick tack. Once you get all the mill scale off, this tubing welds up pretty nicely. I'm going to spin it around and repeat on the other side. It's a little trickier welding vertically, but it's much safer with a heavy pallet lying flat on its side. Now I'm removing the mill scale from the center sections of the tubing to get them ready for welding. I measured the dimensions of the drill press base and matched them towards the pallet. After cleaning all the surfaces, now it's ready for welding. It's important to be as comfortable as possible in your positions in order to have the best weld. Now I shift the pallet over the edge of the table so I can reach the center section. These were the more difficult sections of the welding portion due to the tighter clearance, but I managed to get things done. Turn it around to rinse and repeat. I had some issues with porosity due to lack of prep, but I grinded those down and welded away. Here's a progress on the pallet and it's taking shape quite nicely. Time to make the leveling feet for the pallet. I get some extra two and a half by two and a half square tubing and make cubes out of them with the cold saw. Here you see a nice shot of the Brobo cold saw on its stand. The cubes turned out pretty good. Time to prep them up, get rid of the mill scale, and ready for welding. I use a 2764 drill bit to punch all the holes. Here's some pretty cool shots of the drilling. And then use the half inch by 13 tap to cut the threads. You need to make sure the tap doesn't go in crooked. That way I can fit them with half inch grade 8 bolts. Here are the leveling feet. They're needed because the concrete slab isn't completely flat. The nuts are there to add more threads due to the additional weight. Here I weld the nuts to the leveling feet and I tap them afterwards to make sure the bolts run smooth. 
Now it's time to prep the pallet for the leveling feet. After cleaning and prepping the welding surfaces, I took my time to make sure the welding feet were in position and square. Once tacked down, I welded everything up. I had some porosity issues again, but once you grind it all down and weld it all up, it works just fine. Here I spin the pallet around so I can weld on the two feet on the other side. Three sides of the feet is plenty strong, and I moved around to make sure nothing got heat warped. Here's how the pallet looks with the welding mostly finished up. I'm careful bringing it down to the ground. The pallet weighs about 150 pounds at this point, and I'm glad it's on the floor. After closing up these four sections of square tubing, I'm done with the welding. Now it's time to separate the drill press off its wooden pallet. Using these 2x4s made the job much easier. I had to use my two post lift as the drill press is over 600 pounds. Once the wooden pallet is gone, the steel pallet slides right in. Here I'm just making sure that the drill press is centered onto the steel pallet. I had to measure and remeasure a bunch of times because the drill press would shift every time I lifted and lowered the two post lift. I eventually centered the drill press onto the steel pallet and marked it for drilling. With the locations marked, it's time to drill the pilot holes. This is kind of tricky to do freehand as the material is pretty thick. It didn't help that my drill bits were getting dull either. Once I went through the tubing, I enlarged the holes with a half inch drill bit. Drilling with a hand drill though, fucked up the cutting edge. Luckily I had a half inch drill bit from my jobber set to finish the job. Once the holes are half inch in size, I flipped over the pallet so I can drill the bottom of it. I used my step bit and drilled it to the width of my 3 fourths socket. This way I can use a socket to tighten the bolts from underneath. Once the drilling is done, it's time to bolt it all up. Now the drill press is safely secured onto the steel pallet. This ladies and gentlemen is how our drill press looks bolted onto our steel pallet. I used some 3.5 inch grade 8 bolts with nylock nuts so it wouldn't loosen underneath. Here's how the leveling feet look onto the concrete floor. There are big openings on the steel base, but I'll eventually be building steel plates so it's not such a tripping hazard. Here I really try my hardest to see if I can budge the drill press while it's bolted onto the steel base. It wouldn't move at all. I did cut some rebar to use as a safety strap when moving the drill press around just in case. Well that's it from us. We'll feature the drill press on the next video. Until then, for Riles Productions, catch you guys later.